Summary of Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese Sol Indian Horse is an indigenous Canadian and a part of the Fish Clan, which is a group that lives near the Winnipeg River. He grows up with his parents, John Indian Horse and Mary Mandeman, two of his siblings, and his grandma, Naomi, in the early 1960s. At a young age, his brother Benjamin and sister Rachel are taken by white Canadians in the area and sent to Christian schools where the main goal of the teachers is to remove the Indian from them. At the time, all indigenous Canadian children were forced by law to go to these schools. This means that Canadian officials had the legal right to break up families, and they often did this by kidnapping children. When Saul's parents lose their children, they drink a lot and move from town to town in search of work. Benjamin, who had run away from school, somehow finds his way back to them. The family plans to go to God's Lake, where Saul's relatives used to live many years ago. Saul has a mysterious vision at God's Lake. He sees his ancestors having fun and laughing by the water. Then he sees them being crushed by huge rocks. Not long after this vision, Benjamin starts hacking up blood, which is a sign of a disease he got at school. He dies one day while he and his family are picking rice. Saul's parents take Benjamin's body to the nearest town to have him buried in a Christian way, but they never come back. Naomi thinks that she and Saul need to go down the river so they don't die of the cold. Naomi takes Saul through a harsh weather and the wild. The two of them eventually make their way to the edge of the town of Menaki. Naomi freezes to death there in the middle of a snowstorm. Two white men take Saul away from the body of his beloved grandmother and bring him to St. Jerome's School for Indigenous Children. It's scary to go to St. Jerome's. The teachers, priests, and nuns think it is their job to teach their Indigenous Canadian students about Christianity, the English language, and Western rules. They give harsh punishments to anyone who speaks their own language, and they treat small children as if they were tortured if they did even the smallest wrong thing. Some of Saul's friends are killed by beatings or by taking their own lives. Many of the children are abused and raped by teachers at night. Father Gaston Le Boutillier, a young, kind priest, is Saul's only protector at St. Jerome's. Father Le Boutillier looks out for Saul and tells him he should learn how to play hockey. Saul is too young to join the school hockey team, but Le Boutillier lets him clean the ice every morning, so Saul can train on his own. Saul teaches himself how to skate and shoot the puck on his own time. Even though he is much younger and smaller than the other hockey players, he becomes a great athlete. Le Boutillier sees Saul's skill and lets him play in hockey practices, where he does very well. But when Saul is on the other team, he is made fun of because he is an indigenous Canadian. One day, an indigenous Canadian man named Fred Kelly comes to St. Jerome's and offers to adopt Saul. Kelly sees how talented Saul is and offers to give him a home and a family in exchange for Saul playing for Kelly's local team, the Moose. Saul accepts. He says goodbye to Father Le Boutillier with tears in his eyes, and Father Le Boutillier tells him that hockey will set him free. Saul moves in with Fred Kelly, his wife Martha Kelly, and their son Virgil Kelly, who is a couple of years older than Saul. The hockey team's leader, Virgil, urges Saul to do well. Saul is a lot younger than the other players, but his skills are so good that they value him. The hockey team plays in events with other indigenous Canadian teams and almost always wins. Saul, who quickly becomes their best player, is a big reason for this. When a skilled team of white Canadian players invites them to a game, it's a big step forward for the team. Saul agrees to play with his moose friends, even though he doesn't want to play against white Canadians because he has been treated badly in the past. The Moose have a rough start to the game, but Saul's great play helps them come back and win, 6-5. After that, the Moose started to travel more and play the best teams in Canada, often beating them. After a particularly amazing win against a white team, though, white locals attack the Moose team and beat them badly. After this terrible thing happened, Saul starts to notice racism and prejudice in his everyday life more often. One day, a person who looks for new talent comes to see the moose train. 
The scout tells Saul that he has the skills to play professionally and gives him the chance to learn in Toronto and then go pro. Saul doesn't want to leave his friends and new family, but Virgil convinces him to do so. Saul plays well for his rookie team in Toronto, and the future looks good. But as the season goes on, he sees that other teams and even his own friends make fun of him because he is Native American. Even when they like what he does, journalists call him a savage and a crazy redskin. Saul gets more violent during games and finally starts fighting with people on the other team on a regular basis. Soon, Saul is kicked off the team and goes back to live with the Kellys. Saul gets a job and leaves town right away to look for a better one. Saul works in different low-paying outdoor jobs for the next couple of years. He doesn't make much money, and what little he does have, he spends on drink. His white co-workers sometimes pick on him because he is Native American, but he generally fights back. By 1978, Saul is a drinker in every way. He moves in with a nice farmer named Irvin Sift, who treats him like his own son. Saul tries to drink less with the help of Irvin. But he finally gives up and starts drinking more and more. He feels so bad about this that he leaves Irvin without saying why. Saul drives all over the country, drinking a lot and then trying to stop drinking totally. But when he tries to quit, he starts having seizures and ends up in the hospital. After this, he goes to a place called the New Dawn Center to get help for his drinking. He works with a counselor named Moses to get better. Moses tells Saul to write down what he has learned, and Saul does so in this book. Saul leaves the New Dawn Center and drives to the remains of St. Jerome's. There, he has intense flashbacks to when he was a student and learns the truth, that Father Le Boutillier had raped and abused him as a child. Saul has tried to forget about the abuse for years. Saul goes to God's lake because he is angry and confused. There, he sees a vision of his great-grandfather, Slanting Sky, who tells Saul that he must learn how to take God's lake inside himself. Saul goes back to see the Kelly family again. He tells Martha and Fred what he has learned about his time at St. Jerome's, and they say they understand because they have been through similar things. They tell Saul to stay and use their help to improve his life. Saul gets back on the local hockey team and reconnects with his old friend Virgil, who leads one of the teams. Saul knows that he will still have to deal with the pain of his past as he moves forward, but he is thankful to have loyal friends and a loving family that took him in. About the author Richard Wagamese was born in Canada. His parents were members of the Wabasimung Independent Nations, which is a group of native Canadians. Wagamese had a hard childhood, just like the main character in Indian Horse. He and his three brothers were left by their parents, and he grew up in foster homes where he was beaten and treated badly mentally. Wagamese was poor for a long time and went to jail for a few years. Eventually, though, he got a job writing for a Wabasimung magazine called New Breed. He wrote stories for newspapers for almost a decade and got a National Newspaper Award in 1991. In 1994, he wrote his first book, Keeper and Me, which won several awards. Wabamese also wrote five more stories, as well as a number of poems and nonfiction books. He died in 2017. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.